looks for now as though fears over contagion from the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank have eased. We are joined by Gerard Cassidy, Managing Director and Head of US Bank Equity Strategy at RBC Capital Markets. Gerard, thanks very much for giving us the time. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me on the show. I know fear is an impossible thing to measure. There's no scientific scale for it, and uh, runs on banks are driven by emotions. But does it look for now as though Washington has succeeded in calming fears in the market? I, I think you said it well. I think for Sunday night when they came out with the program to um, ensure all depositors at the two banks that failed, uh, Silicon Valley on Friday and Signature Bank of New York on Sunday, uh, that was an implicit a guarantee to all depositors in the U.S. banking system that if your bank was into the same situation as those two banks, your deposits are guaranteed. So I think it really did calm the waters. We're seeing more of that today, as you noticed in, in your earlier segment, that the bank stocks have started to recover today. Is this opening a can of worms, though, here? I mean, will all depositors think, well, OK, I'm covered by Washington and I'm just going to seek high interest deposits? Um, it's interesting because you might recall during the financial crisis, they used many tools like the ones you saw issued Sunday night to calm the waters, to create financial stability. So I think what you're going to find is that this is a temporary, it's not indefinite in terms of the guarantee on deposits. Mm -hmm. But you're right. I, I think the, it should be reassuring to any depositor over $250,000 that they will be um, taken care of in a time of crisis. Is this like, is it likely that other banks made this kind of bet? I mean, some of them hedged their interest rate exposure, but are there a, a number of other banks that have maybe not reported or realized losses because they went too big on long-term bonds? It's, it is the, that is the good question to be asking others. And this company, Silicon Valley, as well as Signature, they were both outliers. Uh, the two numbers that we focused in on is the losses as a percentage of their securities portfolio relative to capital uh, graphed against, let's say, their level of deposits that were uninsured, meaning they were the large deposits. And these two banks were way off the chart compared to all the other banks. So their business strategy of having you know, 50 percent of their assets and securities and of that amount in the Silicon Valley's case, over 40% in long-term bonds, that is not normal. And that was very unusual, and unfortunately, it's cost them very dearly. Maybe we could put up a chart for First Republic or PacWest. Um, mm. they, they've only partially recovered their losses. Do you think investors will, will bid them back up to where they were anytime soon? It's going to take some time. I mean, when you look at past uh, crises mm -hmm. uh, in the U.S. banks, it takes time, but I will tell you this, based upon the 1990 banking problems, the 2008 and 9 problems, as well as the uh, pandemic in 2020, in each one of those cases, within 12 months of hitting a bottom, and I'm assuming tomorrow, yesterday was the bottom on this one, uh, the stocks were up almost 100%. So I would suggest that it's, you know, it's a grind higher. It doesn't happen immediately. Mm -hmm. But if this has really, saw, if the Fed has solved the problem on the confidence factor on deposits, and I believe they have, we'll, we'll, this is kind of weird to say this, we'll be getting back to normal more quickly than we have in past periods. That's interesting, yeah. Um, President Biden, well, politicians do that, took a, took a shot at some deregulation under former President Trump. <laughs> the Wall Street Journal was having none of that, saying, no, it's not linked to anything Trump did. Right. And I, I tend to th think it's more what the paper is saying. Of course, you know, the politicians will do what they do. They're politicians. But the real key here, very simply, straightforwardly put, and you touched on it, which is they were long duration on assets funding it with short duration funding. That is not a good mix in a rising rate environment. They got caught. This reminds me of 1994, when you saw Orange County, California go bankrupt in the same environment. Mexico had the peso crisis. Mm. Kid of Peabody went under. And so we've had periods of time when rates move rapidly, as they did in 94, under Chairman Greenspan. You're going to have consequences. And I was surprised the consequences took so long to hit, but boy, did it hit on Friday. Yeah, it is interesting, isn't it? Because this has been an unprecedented rise in interest rates over the past mm -hmm. year. Or, well, maybe not unprecedented, mm -hmm. but the biggest in decades. 
That's correct. For most of us in our working careers, we've not seen this before. Um, leave us with a final thought. Are there any implications for the big money center banks here? I mean, is this good? If people feel less confident about regional banks, will the big players soak up business? I would say, you know, some of that probably happened over the last 48 hours. But I think as people come back to their, um, you know, steady hands, that uh, any business that, you know, they pushed out into the money centers, deposits, that is, may, may go back to the regionals. But the regionals, uh, we spoke to a number of them yesterday, mm -hmm. and none of them indicated that they were having any issues with deposits. So I think, mm -hmm. you know, outside of, you know, you know, the Silicon Valley area and Metro New York, the rest of the country was, you know, business as usual yesterday. And I think that was a real good sign.